So in our previous video, we showed you how to scan this engine block. And now we're going to show you um, how to do various operations on the resulting mesh and clean it up. So now we're ready to create a mesh from that original scan. We just press create mesh and it's created one. We actually had one earlier. We'll just delete that so that there's no confusion. And so now you can work all your scan functions that are available to you. You can work on a separate mesh and the, the original scan stays where it is. We're going to turn it off so that it doesn't confuse the issue. And we will then do the following work on the actual mesh itself. The first thing you should do when you've created a mesh is to actually clean it. Meshes generally have small errors and you press clean mesh and it gives you a list of all the faults um, in your mesh. There are no isolated patches because we got rid of them, but there are self intersections, spikes, small holes, and these are actually shown to you on the scan. So spikes are shown as red. Uh, other, other things are shown as orange. The small hole is shown as orange and you can simply choose apply and it will correct all of these faults. We actually haven't selected narrow bridges, but you can remove those as well if you want. All the errors have been dropped down to zero, so you can just uh, click on OK and that uh, mesh is now fully corrected. So the next thing we're going to do is align our mesh to an origin that makes more sense than the one here, which was made when we started scanning. So we choose align to origin and we have a diagrammatic representation of the center of gravity of uh, the XYZ coordinate system uh, at, the, at the center of gravity of the object we scanned. So we can rotate it by moving along the, the rings in X, Y, and Z, and we can translate it or shift it by sliding up and down any one of the X, Y, Z axes, and then choose a line. And that will select the new origin for the scan. But we can also create a better alignment by creating some entities on our model and aligning the system to those entities. So first we're going to create a cylinder along the axle of this uh, transmission and you pick similar curvature and it's created the cylinder. If we go to the other end and click there, it will extend that cylinder all the way to this end and we've now got the representation basically of the crankshaft. Once we've defined our cylinder, we simply choose create to actually create that entity. The next thing we're going to do is choose an, another axis by a plane across an end plate of the transmission. You can increase the tolerance of the selection to select the whole area of the surface. As we select that surface, we've created a plane. Finally, we need a third entity and we will create that one on the top plate of the engine block. And we pick numerous points until we've defined a plane. Click create, click close. And we now have the entities we need for each axis of the alignment. So we're going to constrain the X axis on our cylinder. It's already fitted that. Then we say that the plane one, which was the end plate, we will make the YZ plane and finally the top plane will make the XY plane and now we have a coordinate system that makes sense for the object that we've uh, just defined and we can even change flip the normal so that it's pointing into the gearbox rather than out of it and then you simply choose align and you have a fully aligned transmission. The next thing we can do is to clean up the mesh and the first one to start with is probably the hole fill function. So we have a choice of ways of filling the holes. It shows you all the holes and you can just, in fact, just click on a hole to have 
uh, it automatically fill it. And you can choose whether it's a low curvature, high curvature, or flat fill of the hole. Just click on, here's a suitable hole that we want to fill. So we'll choose hole fill, low curvature, and just click on the rim and it fills it. We can also choose different ways of filling a hole. We can partially fill a hole, for instance. So you choose the middle icon, partial fill. You define two points on the hole and then define which side you want to partially fill and it will fill it. So that's a partial hole fill. Another useful function available to you is the bridge function. We can look at other more complex holes and maybe uh, solve them partially by using the bridge function. So if we wanted to build a bridge across a, a very large hole to make it into two smaller holes, we can just click on a boundary here, for instance, and left, left side, sorry, right side, left side, and the middle part we want, and then go to the opposite side somewhere where you want to bridge two and define two points and the join part, and it will build a bridge across the gap. This was done at low curvature, but you could have defined it to be flat. Another useful tool is the remove spikes function. Um, and if you choose that from the menu, it will show you all the spikes that exist on your scan. And you can actually adjust the level of spikes that you want to uh, select to be removed. So as you increase the slider, you can see more and more spikes and you simply choose apply and it will remove all those spikes. It makes for an improved edge on your scan. If you're satisfied with that result, you can click OK and you have removed all the spikes. Another thing you might want to do is to split the mesh into component parts. So here we're going to separate the top cover from the main body and we'll do that by selecting a plane using the select a curvature function and choosing various spots on the same plane. That has enabled us to create a plane that actually intersects the, uh, the object. We choose close and now we go to the cut mesh function and we choose to cut by the plane that we've just created, which is plane three. And it extends it to cover everything that's included by the mesh. And if it's in the right position for you, you request to keep both parts, obviously. And then you just choose preview or, or you can go direct to OK. You do not want to fill the cut plane. So click OK and you now have two separate meshes. So the original mesh has been kept there and the new mesh is here and they are now two separate meshes. So you can turn one off and, and display it or not as you wish. And they can be exported separately as well. So let's export the lower part of this engine block. Click on mesh two and then you need to go to file export mesh and choose the obj format or the stl file format depending on what file format you want for your mesh and give it a name and save it in your folder then after you've done exported that mesh you should save the whole session which is simply file save session as or save session to save the raw data and all the meshes that you've created during this process.